Okay, well, without further ado, welcome. It's been a, a while since we last did our uh, a live webinar um, with you all. The last uh, couple of months have been, all right, great. Now I get to multitask while adding more people and talking, it'll be good. Um, so it's been a while since we've actually had a, a recording um, or a live webinar. Um, the past three months has been recorded just because it hasn't been as big um, or we were able to fit everything just into that pre-recording because it was simple to set up. Um, obviously with this March release, if I had a nice little drum intro, events webinar um, or event wizard, and then also um, our enhanced email feature. So we figured, especially with the wizard, it justified a live webinar so we could have conversations about it. I could show you um, maybe if you are brave to, to get off of mute and you know do a little cheering every once in a while when I, when I go through the demo. Um, but yeah, we're super excited. Um, with the events wizard, um, hopefully you were able to make it through the um, release notes and saw the video from Chris, our CEO. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty big milestone for Blackthorn. Uh, reason being is that with the Blackthorn team, we are trying to make our apps as simple as possible. Um, and so biggest feedback with events that we got was, why can't you be like Eventbrite? You don't need documentation to set up an event. We heard you. So we brought, you know, the Eventbrite experience into Salesforce with the event wizard. Um, now this is the first iteration. So cut us a little bit of slack um, in terms of making some improvements with things that we need to fix, bugs, um, additional enhancements. Uh, your feedback will go a long way. Um, not sure if anybody tested out the, the feedback feature and got an error, but we are running to a, running into a bug with that. So if you have any feedback, um, don't hesitate to just reach out to me directly and I'll get that forwarded on to, to Chris. We will have that fixed in our April release. Um, but let's go ahead and jump into the agenda. So I'm gonna go through a few updates um, and then we'll go into I have a, a fun motto that I just want to share with everybody. Um, overview of the release. Uh, I also did a structure update with our release note. So just touch on that for um, a little bit. Upgrade notice, demo of events wizard, demo of enhanced email feature, and then I'll go through our session carousel as well. So first, just some fun updates. I figured get to know the Blackthorn team a little bit. We are a fun group. Um, we don't always have to, you know, have shop talk in terms of of all the work that we're doing and how we're, you know, getting these out to you guys. But a few updates. So Adam, our customer um, support manager, and Kristen, our director of marketing, had their babies um, since I actually last did a, a a live webinar. So Adam, he's coming back here next week, which we're very excited for. And Kristen just started her maternity leave, so she'll be out for a while. Um, a few other things, uh, progress update. I don't know if anybody knew, but um, Blackthorn is participating in Stripe's climate um, uh, funding, essentially that they are putting funds to all of the different ways that we can, can help the climate. And we I think just looking at here. So this was an update from a month ago that were around $6,700 that we've contributed. And it just comes off of our um, transactions that go through Stripe. Um, so yeah, way that we can help help the world. And then of course, you know, come come January with all, all the fun, uh, we had to insert Bernie into some of our, our past pictures. So just wanted to share that with you and, and with some of the members from, from the Blackthorn team. All right, uh, so the motto, um, biggest thing that we're just living by, especially for 2021, is that nothing, not a nil, not with Blackthorn events should take more than 30 minutes to understand or configure. Um, what does this mean? This means that if it is taking more than 30 minutes um, to do, you should be, you should time yourself and then reach out to Blackthorn. The whole goal is that we wanna have a really, really nice experience for everybody, whether you're an admin configuring a process around a Blackthorn feature, or you're an end user event planner, event manager that's trying to configure an event, send out an email, report on something, shouldn't take long to do. Um, if it does, reach out to us. Don't go into that big hole of spending two hours, three hours of trying to configure it. You just get frustrated and then that frustration builds and you know, you try, you maybe choose something different. So let us know, let us fix it. Like I said, we wanna be the the best app and, and have the best experience with you. Oh, and this is of course going into our other 
uh, presentation. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the other items of the agenda. So the March 2021 release, um, really long intro. Again, we're super excited about the event wizard. So please try to read through that. Um, it just goes through the benefits of the wizard and then also with our send grid integration um, and what you can expect. Um, the two minute video from our CEO. And then in terms of the structure, so we received feedback from um, a few customers that it seems to be very admin heavy. And I think release notes just inherently are always about the admins who need to configure it for their end users. Um, but we wanted to provide maybe a little bit of a different experience, something for admins because they do ultimately need to configure it, but then also um, instructions and documentation and visuals for end users, event managers. So with this release note and then with future release notes, we are gonna have it broken out to um, admins and event managers. So if I go down to, so for example, like the event wizard. So we have a specific link to the admin upgrade um, instructions for getting it configured for end users. And then we gave um, documentation for our event managers in terms of how to use it. Um, again, with the, the confirmation that your admin did do everything like give you the access um, so that you can use it. But then this is tailored to you in terms of how to navigate and, and what you should expect from the feature. Um, so hopefully that helps. Uh, again, we're always looking for feedback in terms of our release notes and anything really with documentation. Just get back here. All right. Um, so the next thing too is just the upgrade. Notice just kind of more of a PSA. We've had this on the last two or three releases now. Um, starting with the June 2021 release, we are gonna require that all customers be no more than three versions behind the latest version. Um, we're constantly making um, big updates, uh, refactoring certain structures. So being three versions behind just um, allows you to be confident with the latest solutions or bug fixes um, that, we've, that we've deployed. So again, we'll reach out in June. Uh, it's not gonna be this like, hey, you have two weeks to upgrade anything. Like we'll, we'll work with you to make sure that everybody's on the, on the three latest versions um, before we essentially uh, enforce it, which again, we'll work, we'll work with you, but but we'll promote it um, heavily. All right. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead and jump in. Um, with the event wizard, um, essentially, we have the instructions, um, again, for the admins for how to configure it. Um, something notable, and I won't go too much on this side of it, but if you have end users who are not um, using our events admin permission set, um, the wizard will not work unless you provide um, these specific uh, configuration settings for the event wizard to your users. Um, we are working through uh, a new managed permission set for more of a end user that will have access to all of these event wizard settings. Um, but in the meantime, if you can do the admin permission set, great. If you cannot, then you will need to, I would say maybe just create a custom permission set at this point and then give your users access um, to the necessary requirements. All right, once you do that, um, then you can send this off to your, your end users for how to configure it um, or how to use it. So as, as simple as possible, remember, no more than 30 minutes. Um, all you have to do is you come to the launcher um, and I already have it on the admin um, tab here, but then you just type in wizard and then you can click on Blackthorn Events Wizard and then you're into the experience, right? And so we'll go ahead and walk through one today together. Um, I'm gonna use my alma mater, USD, for the event name. While I start going through this, if anybody wants to come off mute, let's make it as interactive. I challenge somebody to come off mute and ask a question because I'm sure you all have them while I'm configuring this event. Otherwise, I should have added elevator music in the background. So what I'm going to do is from, from this point is that you can clone from a previous event um, if you want to, or you can create a new event. Um, thinking about use cases, right? So if you have a large organization with many departments, it might be good for the admin team or those subject matter experts to go ahead and create those templates of certain types of events. 
for example, if you have like a, you could call it like one day alumni um, paid event template. And then that way you can search in here. Um, I did have an example for alumni template. Um, again, I'm not gonna go through the, the cloning route, but just something that you can do to help your end users um, navigate the wizard, maybe reference something so they're not entering in as much data um, and can get through creating an, uh, an event quicker. Kevin, yes, this will work if you do have a record type to the event object. Um, I don't think it filters down on anything based on that. So you're gonna see all events um, within like the lookup for um, cloning though. So good question though. Um, so for my um, example event, I'm gonna go ahead and do tabbed. Uh, this is a larger event where I'm gonna have more so just um, different ticket types and it's gonna be paid. Um, so that doesn't qualify for our simple UI theme. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click next. As you can tell, you, you've now started to receive some confirmations and bringing you through the process of what's completed and what you need to work through next. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click upload banner. So anybody that's sick of having to copy an image URL from an external source or from files or from documents or wherever you're trying to copy the URL and paste them onto the event record, you no longer have to do that. You can upload the image right from, from your computer. <laughs> All right, and then from there, obviously the, the description stays the same as what you see on uh, from, from the normal event um, registration or the event page. So I'll just go ahead and being, I'm being very creative right now. Um, and then the nice thing here with our webinar and meeting URL, so you can enter in your own meeting link if you wanted to, just like you were, um, you were able to before, um, before we did all of the integrations, or you can select your webcast. So then you can just automatically connect or you can connect and add a webcast account right from the wizard. Um, again, the, the goal here, the thing I'm going to keep repeating over and over is how can we keep everything into one experience so you're not expecting, you know, an end user to navigate to 15 different areas of, of Salesforce. Um, we're going to make this an in-person event. Well, I kind of noticed that that's a little buggy. Doesn't exit out of there. Um, so for here, I'm going to go ahead and select um, my payment gateway. So I'm going to do Stripe. Um, for this one, I, I'll add in a contact us email just in case anybody has feedback. And then I'm going to do forms specifically to the tickets. So I'm not going to define that here um, for our set, um, event settings. I'll have the connected university. So as you start to think about like, okay, do I want um, my team to just always create their own events and we'll give kind of the documentation on what, uh, you know, which event setting to use or payment gateway if you have multiple. Um, or again, with that clone feature, if you have some of those standard templates, those can all be pre-filled. So then they are literally just filling in the, the description and the data of the of the event. All right. And then we progress on. Um, for this event, I'm not going to add any speakers um, or sessions. I'm going to essentially have my agenda or just assumed my agenda was in that description. Um, but for for just showing this in terms of context, um, you are able to add a speaker. You can do it from a lookup of, a, of an existing contact, um, or you can create a new contact and have that linked, and then add in the bio status and then that profile photo as well. Um, for sessions, once you add the speaker, you actually can say at this point in time, yes, connect the two. Um, so you can show which speaker for, for their particular session. All right, so now we'll get on to offers, and this is our tickets. So again, a nicer experience for creating an event item and a ticket. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just say alum, and then you can add a description if you want to. So for the price, it's gonna be $25. Um, for the custom questions, I am gonna add um, our alumni question that we have. Um, for the quantity available, I'm just gonna do 200. Um, one nice thing here is, yeah, a great, actually perfect timing, Kelsey. So the to customize the fields that appear on the wizard, um, all you have to do is click 
into the field. Sorry, I may have gone too fast. There's like this little text underneath in terms of what you want to add or remove. And everything on each page of the wizard is managed by a field set um, on that object. So you can go ahead and just click edit and then say what fields you want exposed or removed. And this will include custom fields as well in addition to just the managed fields that, that come with the Blackthorn package. Um, please note, I don't know if this is gonna be somebody's question or a thought, but um, obviously we don't wanna expose this to end users. It really should be more of like an admin configuration it, because if you update it, it's updated for everybody. Um, so we do have a ticket about only allowing this for, for admins. Okay. Coming back here. So I'm going to add a, a 200 for a quantity. Um, and then we'll go ahead and just click Save and Close. Then I'm going to do a new ticket called Guest. We'll put this one at 50 bucks. And I did have a custom question for Guest. Um, we are going to be, again, just for context on the event wizard, we even before releasing this, I think we had around five or six massive um, up, update tickets, or uh, maybe it's been combined into two with just a long list of things that we're going to work through. So um, one part that did get brought up in terms of more of an enhancement is how can we handle the custom question um, process better within the wizard? Because right now, if I were to click in here and say create new, um, one, there's a typo on this, but then click save on this. Um, it actually doesn't launch you into being able to create questions from this point on. Um, I don't know if anybody would have stumbled across this, but I realized when I click on it, it then brings me into the experience where I can go ahead and add form elements to create my custom questions for that form related to the event. Uh, but again, we're trying to reduce the number of clicks. Um, that somebody has to go through to set up an event. So again, coming, but um, isn't there right now. All right, so we'll do this question, quantity available, save and close. All right, so we have the two and then we'll progress on. Manage attendees. Um, so this is a super, I, I, I'm in love with this, this step of the wizard because look at how many different ways you can create a list of attendees that you're going to invite to this event. Um, accounts, contacts, campaigns, events, leads, and reports. Way better than trying to push people into a campaign and have that sync into the events. Again, still, if you want to do that, it's a great feature with the bi-directional sync, but this just makes it a lot easier um, in terms of uh, adding people into your event. So I have a campaign that I'm just going to reference um, that I want to send out to all of these people. Uh, this is a little deceiving, something that we did find as, as a, a bug where it shows one people, but one person, um, when in fact I have eight um, added to this campaign list. So again, just little tweaks that we'll definitely make for the, for the April and, and um, future releases. And that's it. So once I save and close, it's going to route me to my event record. Um, from there, I'm going to go ahead and publish it and I'll just show you what it looks like. And then we'll hop into the, into the email template. So we'll go up to publish, publish my event. Does take 30 seconds. I know probably everybody on this call has been a victim to our publishing, caching, uh, you know, escapade that we've been having um, with events. Just know that it is a priority for our development team, and so we will make it easier. The publish button is 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 a route that you can take right now, where it will, within 30 seconds, allow you to click on that event page URL, and you can see your event that you created. Um, if you need to make any updates related to the event, still doing a hard refresh will work just fine. So, um, but but coming soon for for a better experience. And then let's go ahead just to show you the <laughs> publish button is my new best friend. It's, yeah, ours too. Um, so going just to show you like one of the event items, I think one of the other bugs was the, oh no, it does show on, on here, the form question. So we're good there. Um, 
I come back to my event and then let's go ahead and click that URL. Have I made it in the window? Yes, okay, great. And I did not do a hard refresh, I promise. Um, so now this is a nice um, event that was configured from the wizard. You'll see the tickets. If I click on guests, it shows additional information, which is my custom questions. So we're all good there. So what's the next step, right? And so this is this is a point where we can get into building the email um, that you want to use for sending um, to the attendees. And speaking of attendees, I did relate my campaign to the wizard, but I'm not seeing my attendees on this list. It worked in my last event, so we're just going to go back to that one. Uh, this one here. Hmm. All right, well, we'll get that one figured out. So it did when I had this past event prior to this demo, because that seems to be when it breaks is when you're on a call with with customers. Um, so I'm going to just go from this, uh, this event and walk through what a template looks like. Um, so we're going to go back to the event. Um, essentially, we can do we have an event um, email template that I created, but I'll just show you what that experience looks like. If I go ahead and click on new, uh, I'm going to select new from template and I'm going to select from invite like this invitation. Um, hopefully most of you have been in this email template builder. If not, um, this is our email template builder. So you're able to configure this as an end user um, without needing an admin to go to classic email templates or have to create a workflow or do anything like that. Um, there's drag and drop um, and you can literally configure that template for the specific email however you'd like. Um, and with our lovely images here, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that, just have it be about the event details. We're not, uh, we'll leave the venue on there, that's no problem. This attendee event is linking that attendee link, which is what we want so that their information pre-fills. We'll go ahead and click save. And then we'll just give it a call, a name, excuse me. Awesome. So then what this does is it just saves that email template associated um, to the event. Uh, so now the next part with SendGrid. So with our um, enhanced email feature, we have integrated with SendGrid, which is an email delivering client, allowing you to initiate emails out of Salesforce, um, but they're actually sending through SendGrid. So delivery is better. Um, this doesn't count against any of your Apex email limits. Um, and the best part is that you get metrics back in terms of the email send. Um, so super helpful if you have um, anybody that has Pardot, there's a limitation with sending out, you know, like pushing um, the attendee information into Pardot with the attendee link. Um, so if you need to be able to support, you know, that process, um, Pardot's used for many other things, but for this one particular one you're doing out of Salesforce, you now have an option through SendGrid. So you can still get the metrics and you can still have a nice delivery experience compared to having to do it just directly out of Salesforce. So lots of great reasons. Um, we are allowing everybody to try it for free. Um, September is when we're going to start enforcing a usage-based fee um, for the SendGrid integration. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on send email. And from here, so for the from address, I'm going to use, um, this is an organizational wide um, email. And that's what shows up from the drop down. So you'll want to make sure to get that set up. Most of you do uh, just because you have kind of like a standard um, company email address that needs to be like the, the sender. Um, and then we'll go ahead for our email template. I'm just going to do my invite. Uh, I think this invitation. Got somebody else in the waiting room. Okay. This one's a little buggy as well when I'm trying to select. There we go. Uh, and so for the attendee filter, I'm essentially going to say when there's a registration status of invited. So everybody that has that status related to this event is who I want to send out this email to. You can have it be to invite. Um, if you do that, then they will automatically get switched to invited um, afterwards. And then for this, you'll go ahead and click send. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. 
all goes well, then we'll be able to head over into SendGrid. So you'll see that it was sent to eight attendees, which is great. Um, so a little bit of a disconnected experience because we're not bringing the email metric back into Salesforce from SendGrid. Um, it is something that we wanna do. It's just not something that's live today. So when you go through the setup of this integration, we essentially give you a user um, in our SendGrid or you're considered a sub user. And then what happens is that you can log in and then this is how you can view all of the different stats on the emails that you send out. So again, disconnected, but we will get it into Salesforce. Um, another item that we're gonna do, or at least that we were having a conversation about was the ability to have metrics on an ind individual level. So in having that related directly to the attendee. All right, so if I go to overview, and then I'll go ahead and click on, still finding like the best way to handle this a little bit, but if you come on over to category stats, and this essentially is the Apex email, how do I phrase it here? Like the Apex email send record from, from Salesforce um, that comes into SendGrid to show you like, okay, this one was the eight um, emails that you sent out two delivered, five opens, two unique uh, opens, clicks. So you have all of this information in terms of who un unsubscribed, um, bounces. I, yeah, the list goes, goes on and on in terms of what you can evaluate. That's, that's it with the enhanced email. Any questions, any use cases that you're like, I, I want this and I need this, but you didn't show me with the wizard or sending out emails? Well, if you do, you know how to reach us. Um, last but not least, uh, our session carousel. So this is just an additional enhancement that we wanted to make with being able to view sessions, especially if you have a major event and you wanted to kind of like have um, some specific sessions up at the top. So if I come over here to events, I click on our session carousel. So on each session, there is now a new field um, that says featured session. And essentially what this does is it'll bubble it up to the top and it'll be on this like rotating carousel. Um, I think we go for 10 seconds for each session. So I'll show you what that looks like right now. Just a, more of a kind of a, a minor um, update just so that you can see that. I love that we added a carousel for the image. So yeah, so now you'll see it at the top. Um, so if you just have like write a multi-day event and there's like a featured session on day four, you can bubble that up to the top so that people don't miss that or you can again give, give better exposure to it. Okay, we probably aren't gonna need the, the full hour. Um, let's see if there's anything else that I missed for our release. Mm, mobile check-in app with people going back to in-person. Uh, yeah, we ran into a lot of bugs, which I guess when um, everybody stopped using it immediately uh, and then we hadn't been using it for a year, um, it was, we had to dust some cobwebs off. So we did make a lot of changes with that. So everything should be visible now in terms of seeing all of the labels and the images, the list of events, um, and then seeing the sessions related to the events um, that should be working now. Um, if you run into any issues, just let us know. And then, yeah, a few front end and, and back end bug fixes, um, as always, that we just, again, keep ref refactoring and, and refining the work that we had completed to make it the best. And that's it. So I am open to any questions if anybody has anything. Um, if not, I'll go ahead and get this recording up on the release note. So if you need to reference this, you, you definitely can. Um, thank you all for attending. I hope this was super helpful. Um, again, takeaways. Don't spend more than 30 minutes on reading or configuring anything with Blackthorn events. Reach out to us if you need help. Um, talk to us through your scenarios, You know, especially with the event wizard and the enhanced email. We, we only move as fast as the feedback we receive. So 
throw it all on us so that we can improve it quickly so that you have the best experience immediately. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone.